Hi, I'm Steve Jones from Redgate Software and SQL Server Central, and I want to show you how to create a SQL clone image. In a previous video, we did the installation of the service and the agents, and that gets us to a get starting page. And the second step is to create an image from our database. Now, as it notes here, an image is a read-only copy of the database that contains all of the data. This is actually what's shared out to each team member that creates clones from this image. So this is kind of like a scalable shared database where each clone reads the most of its data from the image file, and then it has its own separate file for differences. But the first step is to create an image, so let's do that. Now when I click create, create image, I come to this workflow where I choose the source, and then I can make modifications, choose a destination, and review what I'm doing. Now the type is the first thing I'm gonna choose. Am I gonna create an image from a backup file, which could be a native SQL Server backup or a SQL backup backup, or a SQL Server. In this case, I'm gonna choose a SQL Server, when I click continue, I now choose the instance and database that will be the basis for my image. So by default, this will detect the instances on my machine. You can see I have two instances here and I'm gonna choose my default instance. It does a check to ensure that the clone agent service that I'm actually running on this workstation can access the SQL Server. I could also use SQL Server authentication if needed. And then I choose a database. We auto detect the user databases and I'm gonna clone this AdventureWorks database to create to my image file. When I click continue, I have the option to make modifications, which I'm not gonna do in this video, but we will show you how to do that in another video. And then I need to choose a destination. If you'll recall in a previous video, we created the SQL clone images share, which is empty, and that's where we wanna store things. So let's choose that path. And because I've tested this, I know it's the server name and share name. I click continue, and I need to give my image a name. For example, I might do, give it a date, so today is the 15th in 2008, February, or I could give it something else, I may call it a base. This is a name by which all the developers or all the administrators that create clones want to refer to this image. And because I will refresh these images periodically, I often want to give it some name that's meaningful to everybody else. In this case, I'll give it kind of a date and a base so we know this is the AdventureWorks normal database and we haven't done anything to it. I click Create Image, what happens is the agent service on this workstation, or actually on this instance of SQL Server, will connect and start to copy out that image file. And you can see it just takes a few seconds to copy almost 300 megabytes into that image file. And I see the metadata here. This was the source, it's on the Atlas instance. This database is now stored in this location. And if I were to go to that file, we see a folder and then we see a VHD file, which is all of the data essentially in my database. From here, I could click, click clone to start creating multiple clones off of this image in seconds. And the process of creating these images is roughly the same, even if uh, it's a, a large system or a small system, it just copies all this data to that image file. And then the clones are created in seconds from there. Hopefully this has helped you get started. If you need to create additional images, you would just go to the create image and follow the process again. Please give SQL clone a try. I'm Steve Jones from Redgate Software and SQL Server Central.